Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam, and in this video, I'm going to try to show you why pH is so important to plant health. So at its most basic level, plants use the sun's energy to turn nutrients or elements, they're just basic elements in the soil, into amazing chemistry to make fruits and all kinds of flowers and vegetables and all the things we love in gardening and in wooded spaces. And it's just an absolutely incredible thing what they can do with these basic elements that are in the ground. But guess what? You can have the elements in the soil that that plant needs, but if your pH isn't right, those nutrients can actually be locked up in the soil. And when you buy a fertilizer, a fertilizer has, you're always gonna see the three numbers, like this uh, Osmocote is 14, 14, 14. Those numbers are the macronutrients. Those are the three things that plants need in larger volume. They're nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And then a lot of fertilizers will have some micronutrients in it. This uh, Espoma product right here, they've added some sulfur and some calcium and some magnesium into this product. And those are micronutrients and there's lots of micronutrients. You can actually add some of these things to the soil and them not actually affect your plant health because your pH is not correct. You can get a basic pH meter like this one right here. Uh, it measures pH from three to eight. The nice thing about this meter is it actually is a moisture meter as well. It'll help you watering your house plants and things like that. But what you'll notice on this pH meter is it sits at seven when it's not in use. Seven is neutral. Uh, anything below seven, we consider acid. Uh, things that are acid in the world are things like vinegar. Um, anything above seven is called alkaline. And things that are alkaline in the world are chalky things, typically like milk, uh, antacids, uh, lime that we use to actually raise pH. It's a real chalky material. You'll hear many, many times in your gardening life that this plant likes it slightly acid, slightly acid. And I'm gonna show you on a chart, we're gonna build a little chart together and I'm gonna show you the different nutrients and how readily they are available at different pHs. There are plants that like soil very, very acid, blueberries, azaleas, rhododendrons are in that group. I'm gonna show you why they like to live in that little area on the pH scale. But most things like it just slightly acid. If you have alkaline soils, you're very familiar with some of the nutrient deficiencies that happen in those soils. And that'll show up as we build this little chart together. So let's get started. Okay, so I set up a basic chart here. Up at the top, we have different pHs. Uh, seven is right here. This is, this is considered neutral right there. Anything on this side of the scale is alkaline soils. Anything on this side of the scale is acid soils. Uh, when you get way down in here, this is very, very acid. You get way up in here, that's very, very alkaline. You typically don't see numbers you know, that are this far down. I would say that most of the time, if you get a soil test done, it's probably gonna be somewhere between five and you know, a little over seven and a half would be normal for most areas. Uh, over here on the left, I have nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. That's your three macronutrients right there. And then there's sulfur, calcium, magnesium, iron, manganese, boron, copper, and zinc, and molybdenum. Those are your micronutrients. Individual plant varieties don't necessarily need all of these to do their magic, but I want to show you where each of these things is available in this chart for the plant to easily use them. So what we know about nitrogen is somewhere between six and eight, it's very readily available. I'm gonna to try to do about a double line to represent very readily available. When the pH goes under six, it actually becomes less and less effective. And I'm just gonna narrow that line down as it goes to there. And it just becomes less and less effective. Same thing when the pH goes, when the pH goes over eight, it just becomes less and less effective, but anywhere between six and eight. If you have nitrogen in the soil through fertilizer or whatever, or whatever natural means, the plants can take it up very easily. Phosphorus has a very similar chart of where after eight, it kind of becomes less effective and down to six, it's very effective. Plants can take it up very easily. And then we see that similar 
kind of drop off in very, very low pHs where the plants have a harder time taking up phosphorus. Just like that. This is going to be a very ugly chart. Potassium and sulfur are available at pretty much all pHs down to about five and a half. And then after that, start to uh, drop off in their effectiveness. So somewhere right about there, we start to see a drop off in potassium like that. Again, this is a very rudimentary drawing here. And we got the same thing on sulfur. Calcium and magnesium kind of mirror nitrogen, but they drop off on both sides just a little bit earlier. So where this was somewhere around 6, it's somewhere around 6.5 that calcium drops off like that in its effectiveness. And plants can take it up down here. It's just not as readily available. And then it drops off here as, the, as it becomes more alkaline very quickly. And like I say, it's a very similar chart on magnesium here. Somewhere right in there. There's the sweet spot. Somewhere between about 6.5 and 8. Okay, now iron is very different than the rest. It's extremely effective in very acid soils and starts to drop off as we get closer and closer to neutral and drops off very quickly. In alkaline soils, it is hard for plants to take up iron. You see lots and lots of iron deficiencies, which show up as yellow leaves with the veins in the center of the leaves. That's what iron deficiencies look like. And you can see anything on the other side of neutral with iron. It really has a hard time taking it up. Manganese is very similar chart to iron and drops off even sooner. Somewhere around 6.5, it really takes a dive in its effectiveness. Boron pretty much uh, mimics iron and it's pretty effective in very, very low pHs. And then sometime around neutral, it becomes hard for the plants to take it up. At most normal pHs, copper and zinc are pretty, pretty readily available. It drops off a little bit on the other side of neutral, on the alkaline side, but not too terribly much until it's pretty much off a chart that would not be normal in any kind of soil, maybe a little bit between after eight, it starts to drop off some like that. So molybdenum, actually drops off on the acid side of the chart and is pretty readily available at all other pHs. But when you get start to get over here, it drops off as the pH goes much, much lower. Okay, so that's complete our very, very ugly rudimentary chart right here. But the thing I want you to see from this is right here, 6.5. This would be considered slightly acid, seven being neutral right there. If we draw a line from the top, straight down through the middle of this chart right here, straight down, you're gonna see we hit the sweet spot on almost every single nutrient. Not every plant needs all of these different nutrients, but if you put a plant in a soil that has a pH of 6.5, almost everything it needs is going to be available in that soil. It doesn't mean that plant's gonna be the most happy in that spot. There's lots and lots of plants that have very special requirements for pH. Uh, blueberries, that's one for sure. It wants to be way down here between four and a half and five and a half. Azaleas and rhododendrons also like to live in this area. There's lots of plants that like very low pH. And I think what they want after is they're after that iron and they don't want a lot of nitrogen and phosphorus. There's plants in the plant kingdom that like to be on the alkaline side as well. They like that balance of nutrients. But, but just generally speaking, if you balance a soil mix to 6.5, most things will at least live and have the nutrients they need available to them. So that's why you're gonna hear 
Oh, it likes slightly acidic soil. You can generally get your pH tested from your county extension agent, or you can buy one of those pH testers like I showed at the beginning, and I'll link that in the description of this video, and figure out where your pH is, whether it's a soil mix for a container plant or in the ground, and then you can adjust it accordingly. We typically add lime if we have extremely low pH and we want to get it closer to neutral or slightly acid. Uh, it's really difficult in alkaline soils because people add sulfur or aluminum sulfate to try to pull pH down, but really the solution for alkaline soils is organic material over a long period of time using peat moss, pine bark vines, those kinds of things in the soil uh, are the best way to eventually pull your pH more toward the acid side. As you can see, you know, if you're in the alkaline soils like 7.5 here, you're going to have these iron deficiencies, magnesium deficiencies, and iron deficiency, like I say, shows up as yellow leaves with the strong middle veins in them. So there you go. Here's my ugly chart, and I just wanted to show you why slightly acid is a good start for most plants. So I hope you were able to get something from my extremely rudimentary lesson on nutrient availability based on different pHs. It's kind of amazing that you can take something like ironite. If I told you something has an iron deficiency and you could add ironite to the soil, but if the pH was too high, that iron being there wouldn't really do the plant any good. It can take up a little of it, but it really won't fix the problem until the pH aligns with where the plant can actually take up that iron more readily. So anyway, thank you for watching my video. And if it was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Also comment below with any questions you have about pH. Thank you.